Hey everybody, welcome to Mandolin Chronicles. My name is Jonathan McClanahan, and in this edition, we are going to be able to see in full length the whole process of the truss rod repair that I done on C.J. Lewandowski's 1927 Fern. And uh, in this edition, you'll be able to see from start to finish the removal of the fingerboard, the removal of the truss rod spleen, the actual removal of the truss rod, and the, the anchor nut that was uh, disengaged in the bottom of the heel. You want to definitely make sure and watch this from front to back because there's a lot of great information in here. And even if you're not a repairman or whatever, it's just really good TV. It's, and especially whenever I extract the nut out of the heel. That is, that's a special moment that you do not want to miss. So thank you again for tuning in. And please always remember to like and subscribe on my YouTube channel. I appreciate you. Thank you so much and enjoy. Hey everybody, thank you for tuning in to Mandolin Chronicles. My name is Jonathan McClanahan. I got my brother from a different mother here, C.J. Lewandowski. This is the uh, 1927 Fern that um, everybody knows about. Tell them a little bit about uh, C.J., what you what you discovered about it. Well, um, I got it a few weeks ago and had new frets put in it and the Waverly tuner and all that kind of stuff. And uh, I couldn't get, uh, couldn't get the the action where I wanted it. So I adjusted the truss rod and it just didn't feel right. And it wasn't moving like it should, it felt wrong. So I actually called a chiropractor in Sevierville, Tennessee, and I actually had him x-ray the mandolin. And uh, what I thought was correct, the truss rod has broke loose down in the neck. It needs to be fixed and uh, Jonathan is the guy to do it. I'm gonna treat it as like a documentary. For years and years, even before I was building uh, instruments, I was doing repair work, and uh, I've done extensive amount of work on restoration work, uh, truss rods like this and everything. So I thought it would be really interesting for uh, everybody, um, for me to document this. This is one of the finest ferns I've ever, I've ever seen, I've ever had opportunity to That's work on. Yeah. And uh, so it's an honor. Uh, thank you, CJ, for, uh, yeah. for calling me and, uh, and asking me to do this. Yeah. And this is going to be a great time for the mandolin world. Yeah. All right, well, I want to show you in real time what's going on here and what I've done so far. Right here, uh, this in the Florida here was original frets. So what I've done was I brought my heating iron in here and I removed those frets and kept them back for CJ. The reason why that I removed the frets before I removed the fingerboard is that for this one reason is that whenever I'm allowed to put the heating iron directly on the ebony wood, it doesn't heat, it doesn't overheat it, which is a good thing because you don't overheat the extension and the riser. But what happens is it allows it to heat just enough to where you begin to pull up a little bit, pull up a little bit and wedge it, wedge it a little bit. And then that's the best way to remove the fingerboard. But because it's the best way is because it allows you to maintain the integrity of the fingerboard, the straightness of the fingerboard, and it allows me to save the binding. And that is the biggest deal because CJ and I spoke about this in depth, and that's one thing that we wanted to do was remain 100% vintage integrity of this instrument. The only thing that will not be original on this mandolin when I'm done with it is the spline, the truss rod spline. All right, so if you take a look at this right here, this fingerboard is absolutely perfectly straight. It never even warped at all. And obviously I'm saving this and what I'm going to do, the binding is an excellent condition, exact original condition. Now what I'm going to do is whenever I put this back on, I will be facing this off. This neck is absolutely perfect, perfectly flat. All right, let's look into this right here. I wanna show you what's going on here. I got the truss rod spleen extracted. All right, what's going to go on is this. That, um, the nut is, it's easy to think, well, just pull the nut up through the truss rod slot, and that would be perfect. But the nut back here is wider than this truss rod slot, uh, trough. So what I've got to do is I've got to come in here with my chisel, and if you can see those uh, pencil marks, 
I've got to come in one sixteenth of an inch in here because the nut is straight down there. I've got to come in one sixteenth of an inch here and then one sixteenth on this side. And what that's going to do, and I've got to go all the way down to that cavity where the nut is. What that's going to do is allow me to extract that nut. I want to show you the problem here. I've got pictures of this as well, but I thought you guys would like to see the video of it. If you look right down there, see see the nut? There's, there's the nut. You can see it right there. To get the nut out, I'm going to actually have to notch out right here in the dovetail, just probably, a, I'd say, a sixteenth of an inch from here to there. In extracting this nut out of here, I've got a little magnet because I'm not taking the neck out. I've got this, uh, I ground down this little magnet and I put it on the end of this right here and I'm going to reach this down in there and extract the nut. But it's the weight of the nut is pulling it off because this magnet isn't the most powerful magnet. So I'm going to show you how, I, how I'm doing this. This is going to allow me to grab the magnet or grab the nut without leaving my magnet down in the mandolin. All right. All right, here we go. Come up here close. Now listen real close. Listen real close and you'll hear the nut click on the, um, on the magnet. All right. Might have to fish forward a little bit. There it is. There it is. First time that nut has been seen since 1927. Sometimes you gotta think outside the box when you're dealing with instruments, and especially these vintage instruments like this. CJ and I talked about this, and I explained to him the whole process of neck removal. And CJ made the executive decision. He said, I don't want my neck removed. I want that dovetail joint to remain the way that it is. And this, this is the prime example. You see, I, I took that notch out, I sanded it clean, and it's just wide enough, just wide enough to get that nut out of there. In this way, the dovetail remains perfect. The riser remains perfect and the extension remains perfect. The only thing I had to do was come in here and do a little notch. Now right here is the most, what I would call the stringent part of this whole uh, repair is this right here is up here underneath this veneer. All right, what I opted to do was this. I drilled straight into there without hitting the walls of the trough. And there you have it. And there you can see that the drill bit is in perfect line alignment with the truss rod. All right, so here we go. Let's do this. Take our string wrap it around it, get it back toward the nut as far as it will go. All right, now be listening, just like the, uh, um, whenever we extracted this nut and it uh, made the clicking sound, it will also click whenever I put it back in. And that's a good sign. That means it's a good tight fit on the vertical. All right, here we go. All right, you hear that? All right, now take the razor blade I got a knot. The reason why I have to cut it is because I got a knot on the one side that won't let it come out if I don't. There it is. All right, now. Now, CJ's truss rod is in his mandolin. I've already cut the spline, and here's the way it's going to go. It's going to go right, right down in there, and this will press on top of the truss rod. It'll be glued there, and then I will add the two notches into here and his truss rod will be completely finished. 
And as you can see here, I glued the fingerboard on last night and uh, it come out absolutely perfect and getting ready to uh, take off all the, the uh, clamps. So here we go. All right, look at that. There she is. There she is. You can look right here, no gaps whatsoever. I used hide glue to put it together, back the way original, the way that it was. The next step will be facing off and then fret installation. All right, guys, this is the moment we've all been waiting for. I want to thank everybody for uh, tuning in to all the uh, to all the episodes and the series. We've had a wonderful time, had a great time um, going through uh, all the stages of this truss rod repair. And here's the final outcome. This is C.J. Lewandowski of the Poor Ramblin' Boys, and this is his 1927 Fern, and um, she's finished. Yep, it's back together. I'm tickled. Uh... <laughs> I thought it was a great Madeline when I got it, and then I discovered that the truss rod was uh, messed up and that nut was loose and everything, and Jonathan was the first guy that I thought of, and uh, I thought he might be a little too busy, but anyhow, we come around, and it it, it was where it was supposed to be, getting uh, getting repaired, so I'm... Man, thank you. It is... Uh, it was special before, but now it's extra special. I don't even... I can't imagine how this thing is going to develop over the next few weeks oh, yeah. before yeah. this it sat for uh 27 years under a bed as well so mm -hmm. we're gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna whoop it we both wanted to pay homage to uh to uh the the uh gibson legacy uh the vintage instruments to those that have walked before us daryl oh, yeah. wolf thank you so much daryl wolf lynn dudenbostel yes thank you so much mm -hmm. lynn and um all the people that uh we love and cherish. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. I mean, we respect you all. Oh, yeah. God bless you. Thank you for no so much for tuning in to Mandolin Chronicles, and we'll see you next time.